What's up everybody, welcome back. So after the previous video about all kinds of traces, I wanted to do a video about projectiles, uh, setting up projectiles and the things we can do with them. So let's get started right away. So to fire a projectile, we need to create a blueprint. So I'm going to create a new blueprint and I'm going to create an actor. So let's call this a uh, new bullet projectile. So the first thing we need is collision. So I'm going to add a component and I'm going to look for collision. So it doesn't really matter which kind you add as long as you add one of these three. So I'm going to add sphere collision and I'm going to drop this right onto the scene root. So this is the new root. Now let me change the radius. Let's do something about maybe uh, six units. <coughs> And I'm going to scroll down to the collision over here and I want to set it to custom and I'm going to set everything to block except for the pawn object. I'm going to ignore that. And then we should have query only. That's fine. World dynamic that should do. So we are good to go over there. Then we can add a mesh to this. So if we select the scene, uh, the sphere collision, add component and let's add a static mesh so we can see something. <coughs> so I'm going to assign the projectile mesh, just a yellow ball. So simply we can see something. So let me resize this. Uh, something like this maybe. So you want the uh, mesh to be inside the collision preferably. We're going to disable collision on the mesh so it doesn't really matter I guess but so select your mesh and go to the collision presets and I'm going to say no collision so no collision set. And the last thing we need is a projectile movement component so I'm going to look for a projectile movement and add that component. <coughs> now this is where we actually set up the projectile and we really only need a few things in here so if we go to the top to the initial speed that's the speed of the projectile when we fire it so i'm going to set it to something like 2000 so the maximum speed that can be different from the uh, initial speed but i'm going to keep it the same at here so we have the projectile gravity scale i'm going to set it to zero for now so there's no gravity uh, on this projectile and then if we scroll down we have the velocity over here and you need to define the axis so if you set the x value to one that's fine it means all the velocity is going on the uh, x axis so if you would uh, for example put 0 0.5 into the z axis then that means it will get a thousand velocity into the z axis and 2000 into the x axis so if you want to fire your projectile straight in front of you, you want to set the x-axis to 1, which is default. So we have a projectile set up and now we need to make sure we have proper collision on this. So if we go to the sphere collision, we set the pawn to ignore. But if you remember from the previous video, if we look at the setup for a character, we have a capsule component and that capsule component is an object type pawn and we have a character mesh and that's also object type pawn. So we don't want to hit the capsule but we do want to hit the character mesh so we need to separate those two and we can do that by adding a new object channel. So I'm going to close this and go to the project settings over here. Go to the collision tab and then uh, at the top right here you can add object channels. So I'm going to create a new object channel and call this enemy mesh. Enemy mesh. Default response block, that's fine. Let's accept this. And then I'm going to go to the presets over here. And I want to open the pawn preset. And I want to make sure that this ignores projectiles. So set projectile to ignore. And accept this and then I also want to open the character mesh preset and I want to set the projectile to block and we should be good to go over there now let me see if we close this down and we open our uh, zombie animation blueprint again so the enemy blueprint then we need to select the mesh of the enemy and if we scroll down 
first select the character mesh setting so that's going to define all of the settings over here and then you want to set it to custom and only change the object type from pawn to the new enemy mesh that we created and the rest should be fine uh, you want to keep in mind by default generate overlap events is off and you might want to turn it on if you want to have overlapping projectiles so you can have a uh, bullet spread so generate overlap events could be turned on depending on what you want to do with this so save and close this down now let me double check so if we open the projectile blueprint now so we made the projectile over here the new bullet then we can go to the sphere collision over here and scroll down and now we set the pawn to ignore and you can set the enemy mesh to either block or overlap uh, depending on what you want so if it blocks there's only going to be one hit and overlapping you can have multiple hits obviously so depending on what you want uh, select one of those and now we need to make sure that we are spawning the projectile so we are going to go to our first person character and this is the fire function where we have a line trace and we're going to replace the line trace with the projectile so I'm gonna spawn an actor from class and over here we can simply select the projectile we created so that's the new bullet projectile and we can get rid of the hit result so plug the rest back in so for the uh, spawn transform we can kind of use the same thing as we did for the line trace if you use my uh, first person uh, first person shooter character and you have the animation blueprint set up with aim correction so your weapon always aims at the center of your crosshair then you should be fine by just getting your muzzle flash socket and shooting straight forward uh, if you do not have that setup, you might want to do something like uh, a line trace from the center of your camera and then fire towards that. So if I do a line trace by channel, and I'm going to start at the first person camera world position, get the location. And then I'm going to get the forward vector and multiply this vector by something like a hundred thousand. And I'm going to combine these two vectors, vector by vector, plug this into this one, and that's the end position of the trace. So I'm going to leave this to visibility. So the result of this trace is where we are looking at with our crosshair and then we want to get the hit result so break it and we have the location over here so then we want to get the socket location from the muzzle flash and we want to get a unit direction vector so i have a video up about working with vectors and that explains uh, some of this stuff so if you're interested i'll link it in the top right of the screen now so if you get the unit direction vector and you can plug in two locations so i'm going to start at the muzzle flash location and i'm going to end at the crosshair location so we can plug this into the rotation from the spawn transform so if i split the struct pin <coughs> this is going to be our rotation and then the location is going to be the muzzle flash socket so we can plug that in directly and then link this up <coughs> excuse me so that's how you could aim if you don't have uh, the aim correction in the animation blueprint like i showed in my uh, tutorial otherwise you can simply use the forward vector of your muzzle flash and that should work fine as well so we have this uh, collision and that's set to default so as long as you're sure that your muzzle flash is outside of your own capsule component you should be fine uh, keep in mind that the collision could uh, cause trouble so if something is not spawning or not spawning at the correct position uh, take a look at the collision and if your muzzle socket is outside of your uh, <coughs> capsule component so i think we should be able to fire this right now so i'm gonna 
play and see what happens so there we have our projectile and it's working <coughs> and you can see it's also firing where I want to so I have a recoil script active so that's why there is some variation but in general it's working so that's the setup for a default projectile now if I go back into the projectile blueprint so I have the sphere collision set to uh, block on the enemy mesh so I should be able to hit them let me see <coughs> so there you can see I'm hitting them so I'm not deleting the projectile so that's why they stay floating in the air so that works so I can also choose to set this to overlap <coughs> and then I can use overlap events and bullet penetration so like this <coughs> excuse me so I have it set to overlap over here right now and on the zombie blueprint it's still set to block so you only need to change it on the projectile if you want to change that so we have the mesh and we still have projectile set to block over here but if we set the projectile itself to overlap then that works fine so I'm gonna set it to overlap here and then we can use either the event actor begin overlap event or we can use the sphere component and get the component begin overlap event that gives us a little bit more information both of them should work fine so if I cast from my uh, zombie and if it's a zombie I'm simply going to delete him so destroy actor and let's also destroy the projectile why not so we have overlap did I set it to overlap yes I did so this should work so we are deleting the zombie and the projectile stays where it is and we can also use the hit event so if we simply do uh, let's say event hit and we get this event as long as we have the sphere collision set to block then that works fine as well so we can plug this in uh, the other actor and that should work no it doesn't projectile block <coughs> so it's not oh I need to set the enemy mesh to block not the projectile so compile and save and that's working as well so make sure overlap use overlap events hit use the event hit so if you use overlap then obviously at the end when the projectile hits a wall you also get the hit event so you can destroy it from the event hit for example or play impact effects on the event hit and on the overlaps you can apply damage and things like that and let me see what else do we have we can set up uh, specific things like bouncing projectiles and that's pretty simple so there's just a boolean over here you can tick it and then the projectile will bounce <coughs> you can determine friction how much velocity it loses when it bounces uh, at what angle it should bounce things like that so that are those variables over here and what can we do more well I told about the velocity so for example if I set the velocity to 0 0.2 it will have a, a <coughs> it shoots to the side so it also uh, applies velocity to the side and if I set this to 1 then it's going to apply more velocity to the side so it shoots more sideways so that's how that works and for example if you want to make a grenade you can set the uh, upward velocity to something like 0 0.4 and then make it bounce and then the initial speed way lower and apply gravity over here so the projectile gravity skill and you can set it to 1 maybe so then we should have something that bounces <coughs> and if I don't delete it on event hit then it should keep bouncing the there we go so you can set up a grenade or something like that with those variables 
And last but not least, we have the homing projectile over here. And I'm going to show you how you can set that up. So I'm going to create a custom event and call that set homing target. And that needs one input and that's a scene component. Scene component object reference. So I'm going to get my projectile movement component, drag off here and do set is homing. I'm going to enable the homing projectile. I'm going to set the magnitude, so set homing acceleration magnitude. And let's set it at something like maybe 1500 to start with. And then I'm going to drag off here again and set the homing target component. And that's the actual target we are going to fire at. So I'm going to plug this scene component into the homing target component. Compile and save this. And if we go to the first person character where we spawn the projectile, we can drag off here and call that function. So set homing target. And plug this right in here. Now we need to set up this uh, scene component. So I'm going to get a little hack here and simply get all actors of class. And get all of the zombies in the level. Get the first one in the array. And now I need to get one of his scene components. So I'm going to get the capsule component. If I get the mesh, then it's going to aim at the floor because that's the origin of the mesh. And the origin of the capsule component is somewhere above the floor. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to plug this into the target for the homing projectile. And I want to make sure I link this up somewhere as well. And now this should be a homing projectile, so maybe we should disable bouncing. Well, let's try with bouncing, why not? So I'm going to shoot this, and there you see it bounces toward that one little zombie's crotch over there. <laughs> and they keep floating, so uh, I'm not deleting them right now, and they're not doing anything with the zombies, so they're going to pile up over there, but that's how you can set up homing projectiles. And in this case, um, as you can see, you can simply set it after spawning the projectile and you don't even need to set the boolean in front. You could set these uh, two variables in front if you would like, so the homing variables here. But you always need to set this after spawning the projectile, so you need uh, some kind of function like this. And for example, if you ADS at an enemy, you could pass on him as a target or something like that. And when you don't give this a target, it will simply behave, behave like a normal projectile. So the homing acceleration magnitude, that also depends on the speed of your projectile. So if I'm going to disable the gravity, for example, disable bouncing, and I'm going to make it smarter, a uh, faster projectile, so something like a bullet. So let's say 8000, and then maximum speed also 8000. So now this 1500 is not going to have much effect. So if I fire now, uh, that looks really weird. So I need to disable the upward movement here as well. So we're firing straight forward. And we still have everything connected over here. So it should be homing. So you can see they are bending to the left a little bit, but it's not much. And that's because the velocity is way higher than the homing magnitude. So if you have a fast projectile like that, you want to bump this up really high. So let's make it a factor 10 maybe and try again. So now you can see it's trying to curve towards the zombie. It's still not powerful enough to actually reach him, but it's trying. So. That's how you can set up homing projectiles. And they also work when your character is moving or your target is moving rather. So for example, if I set this maximum to 500 and I'm gonna shoot at him and then I'm gonna make sure he's moving. You can see they still follow him. So that's working. 
So I think we have everything covered for projectiles. There's not really much to talk about. There are some more advanced options in here, but by default the, the stuff in here should be enough to uh, create some cool weapons. So thanks for watching everybody. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching everybody. If you liked the video or you think you might have learned something, please consider leaving a like. I'll be back for more.